Hello you guys, and welcome to this episode of the Appalachian History Detectives. I am on site, and here behind me, you can see this old house. And this dig here, this permission, is meaningful to me in the sense that not only is this house the house of an old confederate, he lived to be 100 years old. In 1943, he had a community picnic here. The local newspaper came out and did an article on him, took a photograph with him sitting right there on the porch with his pet bird on his shoulder. But this digs a little bit overshadowed for me. Actually, it's a lot overshadowed for me. In the video, you're gonna see some clips of my son and I with the landowner. The landowner is a huge history buff, loves history. And much of the research that I do with my stories comes from a book that he gave me. And it's the history of all this area. And, uh, Shortly after I shot the video with him and my son, he passed away. My interview with him was right before summer, late spring. So I couldn't come out here and detect, and I knew that, because the grass was just simply too high. So I knew I had to wait on this permission to come out here in the wintertime. Unfortunately, he passed away shortly after my son and I were with him. So this video is going to include clips of that interactions with him. And I'm dedicating this video to Betty, his wife. Betty, this video is dedicated to you. Let's take a walk around this house. Let's take a look. I see a lot of sheet metal here from the roof that has fallen off. Has been blown off from the wind. I'm told that there is a basement in here. And that might be it right there, but I see water down in there. And, uh... Looks like there were stairs to the basement right there. And the old man told me that there were Confederate muskets in here. But um, he said that was a tale told to him years ago, and he never did find them. So who knows? Maybe we'll see something on the ground here. Maybe the old chimney. It's a big old two-story house. The confederate of this house, his name was George Slonaker. And you guys know that I'm doing a series on the Slonakers. So, I've mentioned in past videos that the Slonakers had patriots and veterans in every war. This one was a veteran of the Civil War. And he was a confederate. And I can see by the ends of the logs, that is a saddle notch. And saddle notch is an early notch. So this house could feasibly date. I don't know what that is. This house could date 
back into the 1700s. It doesn't look safe. Big rooms. Hey, there's a coin. Right there is a coin. Looks like 1972. All right, for our first treasure right here on the floor. What a shame. What a shame. Oh, there's a nice ladder. It's going to go down with the house. What a shame. See this old house go to the ground. Very old, old cabin. There's the nano stone, and it has come down. This was a double fireplace and right here this was the opening of the fireplace and I want you to see the size of this mantle this there's my hand this thing is huge this is a huge piece of wood and all of this stone is sitting on top of it it's sitting on top of that wood mantle and look, they had where they could hang towels here to dry. And there's a lot, a lot of junk, junk on the ground. A lot of trash. It's going to be hard to swing in here. Something's up in there, probably a squirrel. Boy, oh boy, I see metal everywhere. It's going to be a very hard house to detect I don't know when someone was here last what we'll do is we'll probably have to go for the high tones first but buttons are mid tones and there's no doubt in my mind there could be buttons in the ground here 
from the Civil War. Look at this place. Look how big those logs are. Look how big that tree is. It grew right out of the front. Right there where the front door is. Look at that. It took down that wall. Well, if there's old muskets down there, we're not going to get to them today. They're going to stay and go down with the house and be someone else's treasure. Look at the stones. Look how thick those stones are. I don't know if you guys can see those, but those rocks right there. Those stones are about eight inches thick. So the chinking, if those were used for chinking, holy smokes, I've never seen anything like that. Not that big. All right. All right, so what's your plan of attack in a situation like this? You got real high grass here. Real high grass. You got some daffodils here coming up. You got some old fruit trees here. These fruit trees are very, very old. Here's an old cistern. This cistern has a concrete cap. And guess what? Guess what I see? I see iron. And that tells me this has been detected before. That's what this tells me. Okay, so, so what we have in a situation like this is this is, has been detected before. And we are not the first to be here. So the nails I can see are square nails. Here's a square nail. See that square nail? Yep. Someone has detected this before. Maybe there won't be anything in the ground. If this were mowed or this were cut, it would be a whole lot better swinging my mind lab in here. All right, let's see what they left behind. Let's get started. I asked Michael to come over here because I already told you about how high the grass is. Michael lives near me, and he's got an XB Days 2. And his XB Days 2 does really good in high grass. But he pulled up. We just turned our machines on, didn't we? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hit, and I was sitting there. Actually, I got a high tone over here I'm going after, but I was swinging, and I already found a a button it is right here that's probably a bazinga oh it is a bazinga i thought it had a shank on that thing yeah it looked like it did. it looked like it had a shank on it all right well it felt good when i first saw it but she ain't nothing now not what we're looking for no, I'm sure there's more here. Man, that is a perfect size for, I mean, that looked like a button. Oh yeah, it did. All right, here's my first old artifact. And it is heavy, heavy, heavy. And this is an old iron. And uh, the iron, they would heat these up on the stove and they'd use it to iron their clothing. And this iron here, No doubt is old. But I do not know what year it comes from because these were used clear up until, geez, probably, well, to the invention of uh, electricity. So very, very possible throughout the 1800s. Um, and this style here could be, you know, it could be early, early or late. All right. All right, Michael, what do you got? Oh, a belt buckle. Is it Confederate? 
No, it's no. a it's a eighteen wheeler. Well, it is a belt buckle. Yeah, definitely sounded a lot different. Tons of signals, man. Oh yeah, tons <laughs> of signals. All right, you guys, I found a gun. I told Michael, I said I don't know if it's a toy gun or if it's a real gun, but I found the gun. Let's take a look. I think it's going to be Hopefully it's a toy gun You know what? Seems awfully light Trooper? Troop? Hey Michael Is it a toy gun or is it a real gun? It's awful light to make me think it's a toy gun, but dog, if it doesn't look like a real gun. It's got a safety thing yeah. there. I think it's probably going to be a toy. Yeah, I don't have any holes for cartridges or anything. Yeah. Toy gun. It's pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> There's lots of trash in this yard. All right, I just pulled this out of the ground. And right now, it's probably the oldest thing that I have found, which isn't saying a whole lot. This house has been, the yard has been absolutely full of trash. Yep, yeah, there is a design. I have this corded because I keep losing these. And these are very easy pieces to lose. It is beautiful. I don't know what it is. It's pretty and it's old. And, uh, you know, is it an escutcheon on a piece of furniture? All right, it's something. Let's keep going. All right, you guys. I just found this and I thought it could be a button, but I don't think it is. I don't know what it is. I thought maybe it's a lead bullet. Yep, I don't know. I I think it's a lead bullet. That's what I think right there. I told him I just found a musket ball. Look at the sink. Also, it looks pewter to me. It rang yep. up like pewter. Yeah, it says pewter. Oh, there's a pewter button. Very good, Michael. Yeah, I found the coin. It's right here. I mean, good gosh, it could be a button. It is a button. All right. Well, I'm on the board. Not bad. It's a beauty. All right, you guys, I think I found a button. Being number two for the day. Yep, and it still has the shank on it. Not bad. All right. Not bad at all. All right, you guys. I got a coin. And I've been finding lots of coins, but they've all been modern. All modern, but this one's got some great green patina. Let's take a look. All right, so pulled this one out of the ground. And it is the size. You know what? That's That's a button. That is not a coin. Pull it down where you can see it. That is a button. Yep, yeah, it's a beautiful little flat button. Boy, it looked like a coin, but it's an old one. There's where the shank went. Not bad. It's number three. And I am here with Michael. We're going to go over his finds, and then we're going to go over my finds. All right, so Michael, show us what you got. Mm, that's probably the oldest thing I found. Yeah, that pewter button. button. Yeah. And then three wheat pennies. You found them right up there at the end, yeah. near where I was at. Yep. 
and a lantern piece. You just found that. Yeah. Yep. That nice is and, lid. Lid. and a whole lot of trash. And a whole lot of trash. <laughs> okay, so here is what I found. I found this. I think this is scutcheon plate. It's got a fancy design. I found a nickel, two dimes, one, two, three, four pennies, and a quarter. I found a uh, a, susp a suspender clip here. I found a pewter, the end of a pewter um, spoon or something here. I found two round balls, and I found one, two, three, four buttons. That's what I found. And believe me, I'm happy to have found that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you guys for joining us on this episode. Please hit like, subscribe, and share. We'll see you on the next one. Take care. All right. Butch, what's your last name? Spade. Butch Spade. Everyone, this is Butch Spade. And we are at Butch's house, and we're on a little history adventure here, history hunt. Butch has got a great wealth and knowledge of history of the local valley where we are. And I wanted to record some of his going back in time, telling us some stories. And uh, he ha actually has a lovely little area here. It's kind of a... It's like right in the woods. What do you want to be? Um, I'm thinking about being an engineer. He had a bad choice. That's what I told him. Like, you want to certify my planes in there for a big old building? I can stamp them. I'm licensed. <laughs> so, Butch, how long have you lived here? Right here? 31 years. 31 years. You actually, actually bought this lot and everything in 88. So, whatever that is. And what, what made you decide to choose this area? As well, a, a lot of reasons. A lot of reasons. Uh, Texas had a savings and loan failure. And I cut my dad was sick over at Highview. And I came back, you know, take care of him and stuff, do stuff with him before he died. And I didn't want to stay there because my mom wore me this. So I said, well, I'm just going <laughs> I, I, my intentions were risky. I just, this is going to be like a place to come in the summertime for us. We still got property in Texas and everything. Yeah. And uh, I said, I come over here and start building here. Then I took care of that over for Mr. Kirkwood and he, he got an old one to sell it. He told me I had first chance at it. So he gave me a good deal and he financed it for me. And I paid it off for pretty quick. And now I got 50 acres out here in the mountains to sit around on. Yeah, it's beautiful, isn't it? I mean, it's a beautiful little area back in here. Oh, well, I mean, it's it's got one bad house there and then that old thing down on the corner. I mean, mm -hmm. it, it, you know, what, what I'm saying is not many 50 acre places left anywhere for. No. So yeah, most people live on five acres or less right now. The old uh, the old George Sloan Acre place out uh -huh. there. Tell me about that. Well, it was built 1812, and uh, they original settlers say I guess they were Steve's. I guess that one family, this would be their son or something like that. You know, mm -hmm. and, and then they I guess they owned this whole valley down there at one time or another. I yeah. Don't, I don't know the whole story, but it was a pretty big chunk of land. Yeah, yeah, uh, 1,400 acres, I believe. Something like that, wasn't it? I mean, mm -hmm. it's amazing how big it was. And that's where it was back then. Mm -hmm. See, the original cellar, had, well, the house there was built in 1812. What Steve say that the was built, did he say? Well, it is a saddle notch, and he said, um, you know, late 1700s. Yes, so, see, that tells you it's a generational thing, Ian. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, so they're about the same time. They must have come in here to Heights. Yeah, you know, uh, when Jacob Height and Jost Height came in here, yeah. you know, they came in in the 17... That was 32, it, 17, 30, something. Yep, 30, between 30 Because George K was over at 1732, somewhere around there. See? Um, what did they say over at Burzy's Palace? Did they say what year they thought that house was built? No, they had no clue. But I can tell you, based on the artifacts we found there on that farm, um, including uh, we found six King George copper coins from the 1770s. So that tells me that my date is probably pretty close. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'll get you to go back here in that back room here on the yep. bookshelf. Yep. And there's a maroon book there on the top. It's, just get that maroon looking book. Okay.
right over here? Yeah, just straight back. Uh, excuse the mess back here, but that's where I live. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, so, you know, all this was settled back at the same time. The pews yeah. and the kales and the slow acres. And the reason they settled these areas, the valleys. Yeah, that's where the rich soil was. So, you know, and, uh, now, we just went to uh, a, a, an old pioneer home site up the valley here, and it's Leith, L-E-I-T-H, Leith. Leith? Leith. Have you heard about them? Or well, I don't know anything about, about that family there. They're, they're, they're not original or settler from. Well, the, um, what is their claim? Yeah, they came in here pretty early. Um, I don't know who they came in here with. The only thing left are a few foundation stones. Yeah, it was safe. See, but some of them burnt down. Is That's, it the one on the middle shelf or top shelf? It's up there on the top shelf. It's got it's like Anderson, okay. yep. Spade, and all that. Uh, see, I don't, I mean, I go, but all my knowledge is from a few books that I got there mm -hmm. look at, and then my great, see, I, I was able to remember my great granddad. I mean, I was five years old or six when he died. Mm -hmm. And I used to listen to his stories about things. Yeah. Yeah. It was a total different world, the same way ours is. Think about it. Yeah. Look how quick we came from the first airplane to going to the moon. Yeah. Think about that. You know? Yeah. One generation, really. Yeah. One generation. One generation. Unbelievable, yeah. yeah. But that, that showed you how, see, probably when this, when this, when this was settled, it was it was just an existence like. Okay. All right. But any, I mean, you know, it's a. I, I'm, I mean, there's homesteads here. Anywhere there's good land, there's a homestead somewhere around there. Yep. Springs. Yeah, springs and wood, ox and uh, uh, axe. That's all they needed, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, people say, "Oh no, horse." I said, "No." They use oxes because you know what? Look at the back of an ox. When he dies, you eat. <laughs> <laughs> That's the simplest can be, isn't it? Yeah, it uh, is. Yeah. We're not French. We're not going to eat horses. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, I've been to a country where they do. Oh, I have to. I mean, I'm telling you, but I've been to a country where they eat anything. Yeah. I used to be in Kazakhstan and they, uh, in Kyrgyzstan. Kyrgyzstan, they drink horse milk. Yeah. All right, you guys, this is going to conclude our trip. We are at the old Quaker Cemetery, and in this cemetery is where Confederate George Sloanacre is buried, along with his bird, his pet bird. Now, his pet bird, it was in his will when he passed away that his pet bird would be buried with him. And uh, he made a provision for his pet bird to have his own tombstone. I'm going to show it to you. And there are at least five Confederates buried in this cemetery here. This is George Sloanacre's tombstone. Born April 27, 1842. Passed away May 20th, 1942. Amira was his wife. He was Company F, 33rd Virginia Regiment, CSA. Daughters of the American Revolution put this plaque here. Jonathan Lupton, he was also in the Confederate States of America. His plaque is there. There is one down here. Jesse Lupton, he was a sergeant. He was in Company K, 18th Virginia Cavalry, CSA. He's buried here. And, uh, and right here is Addison Sloanacre. And he was a Confederate in the Civil War. And he is buried right here. And right here, right here behind his tombstone, is his pet bird. And his pet bird's name is Mary Ann. This shows you the impact that pets have on our lives. I don't know how many of you have pets. Many of you, I'm sure, do. And uh, for Mr. 
Sloan Acre here. His pet was actually a, a bobwhite, from what I've been told. And a bobwhite is not typically a kind of bird you'd have for a pet. Those are wild birds, and it's a game bird. And he wouldn't go anywhere without that bird on his shoulders, what I've been told. This is where he lies. This is where he's resting. And his pet bird, Marion, is right there with him. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me on this episode. We'll catch you on the next one. Mm -hmm.